Okay, so today we're going to do a review on the standard Horizon GX2200 VHF with GPS and AIS receiver. Okay, so here we have the display screen. You can see the bottom right, the little round radar looking thing, a target. And you can see it's moving across the screen. I've got the range setting set to one mile. So, if I uh, want to track him, see where he's going. Hit the range button. Range. Increase to two miles. And enter. So as you can see, the operation is quite simple. Okay, so here we are. We can see him there at the bottom right hand of the side of the screen. This is on the two mile range. So let's see what uh, Let's see what kind of information we can get about the vessel. So we hit range, list, info. You can see the name of the vessel scrolling across the top there, Pacific Huron. Distance 1.5 nautical miles away. Bearing 193 degrees true. Closest point of approach 1.5 nautical miles, that's because he's moving away from us. And his speed over ground is 10.2 knots. Now uh, we can call them, oh. uh, but we're not going to. Okay, so we're going to do a cold startup of the radio. So, standard, push the uh, volume button on, wait for it to boot up. Okay. Okay, so right away it's already got our GPS position. Uh, at the bottom right there, that's already going because uh, because I've had the unit working already. So top right gives our channel that we're on 16 on the 25 watt setting, speed over ground, course over ground, GPS position, and then of course the uh, AIS display on the left side of the screen. So there we go. We see a target on there. That's still the Pacific Huron. Again, simple operation, range, list, info, distance now is 1.9 miles. So we'll, uh, we'll keep tracking them and see how long we can track them uh, for, uh, through, through the islands here. There's several, uh, several islands and, and points of land between us and him right now. There's uh, two points of land because uh, we're, we're at the end of a long canal. So, you know, two, two miles is pretty good considering uh, we don't have line of sight. Okay, and here he is now, 2.6 nautical miles. Uh, you can see on the information screen there that the uh, we're getting less information about him now. We're no longer getting his TCPA, nor are we getting the vessel name. We're just getting his uh, his number, 305-535-000. And that is still the Pacific Huron we're looking at. So a little bit less information at 2.6 miles. Here we are now. Distance 3.4 miles. And we're still tracking the Pacific Huron. Let's increase the range setting again, see if we can track them up to 10 miles. Okay, so we're still tracking the Pacific Huron. See the range there now is 4.2 miles, speed over ground, 9 knots. Just giving the MMSI number, no name. Okay, so location for my uh, VHF radio is at the bottom of my stairs, port side. I've got a little kind of nav station set up. Not everybody agrees that interior is the best location for a VHF radio, but for me it's protected from, uh, from the weather and from uh, quick fingers down here. So that, that's why it is where it is. And not only that, but I can do some, uh, some more advanced navigation inside. Uh, that would be difficult to do outside. So as you can see, pretty basic equipment here. 
We've got the uh, standard Horizon VHF radio. We've got a stereo. We have two handheld VHF radios, binoculars, some spare batteries, and we have uh, my my cell phone, which has electronic charts on it. We'll talk about about that a bit more later. And if I want to do some some uh, chart work, uh, I've got my uh, my salon table here available for chart work. It's not the best location for chart work because uh, that's where I eat my meals. Um, some other navigation equipment I have down below. So I don't know if you can see on the bulkhead there, uh, below the lantern, we've got a uh, magnetic compass, barometer, um, and then over here we have um, my main chart table. So this is if, if I'm passage making and I need to do traditional chart work, then I do that over here. So if I need to do more uh, robust chart work when passage making, I do that over here, and I can see the uh, the coordinates on my uh, VHF radio, my, my Latin long coming from the GPS inside the radio from here, so that works. A little bit of information about the uh, machine is I bought it at uh, West Marine in Burlington. Uh, it was an open box special. The uh, the manual was missing. I got it for about two hundred dollars Canadian. This is what the box looks like. Um, all right, so let's take a look at some of the features on this unit. The features that made the GX twenty two hundred appealing to me were the fact that it's a, a quality radio. And it's got GPS uh, readout which I can either connect to an electronic chart plotter or I can use for chart work uh, with my paper charts, which is generally generally my approach. I use paper charts most of the time still. The feature that really sets the GX2200 apart from other VHF radios is the fact that it has an AIS receiver. Now the AIS receiver is uh, VHF technology combined with GPS technology um, and a transmitter and receiver or in the case of the GX2200 a, a receiver only um, as ships will transmit data on themselves, tombstone data, speed, uh, their name, uh, port of call, sometimes what cargo they're call carrying and all this information can be viewed on another ship's or vessel's AIS display. So the reason I bought this unit rather than another VHF unit was so that I could see information on other ships. This can assist in collision avoidance because it, it gives you uh, a long-range detection of, of ships uh, in, in reduced visibility or around corners uh, such as we are here inside this deep canal. I can view view ships uh, moving up and down the river in the main canal, sitting here at dock. So, I, I, for example, I can see when a ship's going to be going into the lock. So, if I were decide, planning on locking down to to Cornwall for for the weekend, I would know not to leave because there was a a ship uh, in the can in the lock at that time. The other feature that the AIS has. Uh, that's a major safety feature is a CPA alarm. So that's the closest point of approach alarm. Uh, I think that's the biggest reason most people get AIS receivers on their sailboats is so that they can have advanced warning if a ship is going to be passing too closely to them. Uh, it's a very loud alarm. Uh, you can choose your uh, CPA. You can also choose your TCPA. Uh, I use mine when passage making on open water. I find it's it's annoying in confined waters like the river here because it's just constantly going off. Every every ship that passes you is uh, in a cl close CPA situation. So I like to use it uh, out on Lake Ontario, for example. Uh, it, it, you know, late at night or if there's going to be rain, then I'm able to detect the ship at a much greater range than I would be able to with my naked eyes, and I'm able to make an assessment of the situation before it turns into a close quarter situation. So. It gives me more time to respond to uh, traffic. 
Now, like I said, this is good for, for long-range detection, for collision avoidance. There's no replacement for your eyes, of course. So, you know, if, if the ship's anywhere inside, say, two miles or something, I, I'm going to stop using the AIS and I'm going to start using my eyes. So this is for long-range detection only. Uh, in my opinion, I know other people use them in other ways, but uh, for me, uh, you know, you get inside a couple of miles and it's time to uh, stop playing with electronics and start uh, watching where you're going. Okay, I just thought I'd show you while we're sitting here, we've picked up another target. Uh, it's not displaying the vessel's name, it's displaying its MMSI number, 316014010. I'm assuming by that uh, MMSI number, it's a Canadian ship, uh, which is what you would expect to see uh, in this area at this time of the year. Okay, so let's look, take a look at that CPA alarm we were talking about. So hold down the menu button, find the function you want. So we want AIS compass setup, select. You've got the option of CPA alarm, TCPA alarm, display range, activation range. Uh, I like the CPA alarm. I find it to be more useful than a TCPA alarm. Scroll down, select. Right now it's turned on, this alarm limit is 5 miles, enter, enter, okay, and that's it, the alarm is on, so you don't need to be an electronics whiz to uh, use this device to use the alarm feature. Okay, I just wanted to show you the chart and where we are and where 4 miles away is to give you an idea of uh, how effective this unit is. Uh, for, for seeing around corners. We are located here at Iroquois Marine Services. Whoops, there's the AIS alarm going off, so that's the CPA alarm. So why don't I show you that quickly? Okay. Cancel. So the AIS is doing its job. A new ship has just come into range. Doesn't give a name yet, MMSI 369970707. I don't think that's a Canadian ship doing 13.3 knots. Okay, so back to the chart. Like I said, we are located here. Got point of land here, point of land here, point of land here, island here, island here. We saw from the GPS he was, sorry, from the AIS we were able to detect him. Like we saw from the AIS we were able to detect him at a range of four miles. We've got point of land here, point of land here, point of land here, island here, island here, four miles away from our current location is way up there it's off the chart so we're detecting them through a lot of land mass even two miles half that distance we're talking here so we're talking through past several points of land so it's highly effective for seeing around corners uh, blind corners which which you can't just do with the naked eye and there you have it folks that's the arc group review on the standard horizon gx 2200 VHF, AIS, receiver, and GPS in one. Uh, I think it's a fantastic unit. I would recommend it uh, when you go to replace your VHF radio on your boat.